another one. Good day. This is Miss Bowen from Pet Practice. We're doing another 2019 performance has past paper video. Today we're looking at the language arts performance task. We look at the social studies performance task later today. So again, this is the only performance task past paper that we are aware of. The grade five performance task was only administered in 2019. And this is what we have as a format or a tool so we can go by to give you an insight in what the actual paper will look like come this week. All right, so let's get into the paper. We're gonna go ahead and read the instruction. So the general instruction read, it says grade six here, it should not say grade six, but it should say is grade five. There's an error with this paper. So the general instructions read, this task has two parts. Part one has four questions, part two has an essay. The instruction to begin reads, there are two sources, Read the sources carefully and then use them to answer the questions in part 1A, part 1B, part 1C, as well as to write your essay in part two. Both sources are articles. We're gonna go ahead and read source one. And the topic of source one is jackfruit. The jackfruit is a large green fruit that is prickly on the outside. When it is ripe, it is yellow on the inside. When it is cut open, the part that can be eaten is yellow with light brown seeds on the inside. In Jamaica, some persons remove the seed and eat the yellow fleshy part of the fruit. Other persons eat the fruit but do not throw, throw away the seeds. They roast the seeds, then add a bit of salt to them. They are eating light nuts. The jackfruit has several health benefits, including being good for fighting infection, keeping blood pressure at healthy levels, and improving digestion. The jackfruit is grown mostly in Asia, and other tropical regions, including Jamaica. It is believed to be originally from India. It is the national fruit of Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Until recently, perhaps the last 10 years, the fruit was not widely eaten in Jamaica. This may have been so because the fruit is sticky and the leaves stain on one's finger. However, many roadside vendors have started selling the fruit in bags. In these bags are the parts of the fruits that can be eaten. So buyers are spared the trouble of separating the edible part of the fruit from the sticky portion. And this Let's move on to number two source. The title of the second source is Aki. Aki is a unique fruit that, Aki is a unique fruit in that it has a lot of fat, a very unusual feature for a fruit. This has caused many persons to think that eating ackee may be unhealthy. False statements like eating ackee will increase a man's risk of prostate cancer are still being made, even by health professionals. 
On the contrary, the fruit is not only delicious, but also a very healthy food choice. The scientific name of our national fruit, Aki, is the Blaia sapida. Aki was named from Captain William Bly, an English sailor who took the fruit from Jamaica to England in 1793. It is originally from West Africa. Jamaica is the only place where the fruit is extremely popular among locals and tourists. However, it has been introduced into most of the other Caribbean islands, for example, Trinidad, Grenada, Antigua, and Barbados, as well as Central America and Florida. The Pan American Health Association or organization, sorry, states that the Aki is a good source of healthy fat and excellent and an excellent source of good fat in the Jamaican diet. Traditionally, Aki is cooked with saltfish to produce an oily meal. Unfortunately, the types of oil used in cooking ackee and saltfish often contain unhealthy fats. These bad fats or excess salt in the saltfish may be responsible for the view that ackee is bad for you. The ackee itself is very healthy, is a very healthy food. Today, there are many ways to prepare healthy and tasty ackee dishes without using cooking oils that may be harmful. Aki contains no cholesterol or unhealthy fat, and I have not found any scientific evidence to suggest that Aki causes prostate cancer. This article was adopted by Dr. Tony Vendries, and it was written in the Daily Gleaner in October 17, 2000, 2017. Part 1A, the instruction reads, read each question carefully, then circle your answer from the options given. In this question, the objective is to summarize and synthesize information from the various sources that we read, and this is from the research strand. And in this item, in this item, we are required to read the given sources and use context clues to explain the word edible. Let's look at the question. Which best explains what edible in source one, line 14 means? So we're gonna go back to source one, line 14. And here is line 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here's the word edible. Let's read the sentence and then try to figure out the meaning of the word based on the context. So buyers are spared the trouble of separating the edible part of the food from the sticky portion. Let's look at the options. So edible means can be seen, a source of carbohydrate, can be eaten, or a source of fiber. So we know that the word edible would mean can be eaten based on the context. Because even in the previous statement or sentence here, it says that People did not eat the food for a period before because some parts of the food are sticky. 
So if the vendors are separating the sticky part that people don't want to encounter from the edible part of the fruit, it means that this is the part that the vendor will eat, the edible part. So the answer is C, can be eaten. Let's move on to the next question. Which is the most important conclusion being drawn by the writer in Source 2? Aki his eye in cholesterol. Aki, eating Aki will increase a man's risk of prostate cancer. Aki is a good source of healthy fat. Aki is a unique food. So it says most important and we can underline here. And we also should pay um, close attention to the conclusion. So the conclusion basically is what we are taking away from the source. And it includes information about how Aki can be prepared and what are some of the myths about Aki where it came from and where it is now at in different places in the world. But the main emphasis is to highlight that although some persons con consider Aki to be unhealthy, um, the Risk factors of eating ackee would come from the oils and the, the other dishes, such as the salt dish that is used with ackee, but not the ackee itself. So it, all in all, this article was done to convince us or to persuade us that ackee is actually a good source of healthy fats. So it is not high in cholesterol, it did not say that. It says it has no cholesterol. And it also says that there's no evidence that it would increase a man's risk of prostate cancer. We know that it's a unique fruit um, because it has fat, but mostly the most important conclusion is that it's a good source of healthy fats. So Let's move on to the next question. Part 1B, the instructions read, examine the table carefully. Column A shows a list of words or phrases. Column B shows a list of descriptions. Match each word or phrase in column A with its correct description in column B. Indicate your answer by writing the number of each word in column A beside the description it matches in column B in the space provided. Not all descriptions will have a number written beside it. So the first description is, the first word, sorry, in column A is jackfruit, and we have a description local on Taurus. The second word, India, and the description took Aki to England. The third word, health professionals. Third description, place where jackfruit, jackfruit came from. And we can match this, but it says to put the number, so we place number two here. You can also draw a little match in here. So India is the place where jack, jackfruit came from. And we can find all of that information in the sources. 
the fourth word, Aki, keeps blood pressure normal is the fourth description. Number five, Captain Bly. And we have a healthy source of, a good source of healthy fats for the fourth description. Sorry, fifth description. And for the sixth description, another name for persons like doctors. So it has been already filled in here, but I'm just going to go ahead and explain. So the jackfruit now is number one because it keeps the blood pressure normal. You can also match it here. The matching sometimes causes a messy look. And probably that's why they, they encourage us to just write the number. All right, so number one, jackfruit keeps the blood pressure normal. And so, you know, so we found um, the description for jackfruit in India. Three health professionals, another name for persons like doctor. Four, Aki, a good source of healthy fat. And five, Captain Bly took Aki to England. Locals and tourists doesn't have a word to match that description, neither the daily cleaner. So we leave those out. Let's move on to part 1C. The instructions read, write one detail from source one and one detail from source two that supports the statement below. The objective of this question also from the research strand, is to summarize important ideas and cite supporting details. The question reads, or the statement reads, sorry, some of the fruits we enjoy in Jamaica were brought here from other countries. So let's go to first one to find a statement that supports our detail that supports that statement from source one. So the statement that some of Jamaica's fruit were brought from other countries. So here, this detail tells us that it is believed to be originally from India. So we can use that as one of the details. Some of the fruits we enjoy in Jamaica were brought here from other country. So I can place this evidence here to say that the jackfruit is believed to be originally from India. So that shows that it was brought here from other countries. So what we're doing now is reading and evaluating both sources and then citing one piece of evidence from each of the sources that supports the statements in the box. We're going to look for an evidence in source two now. <clears throat> and we can copy the part that says it is originally from West Africa. or the detail that says it's originally from West Africa. So those two details here, it is believed to be originally from India and it is originally from West Africa. Support the statement that some of our food that we enjoy in Jamaica were brought here from other countries. All right, let's move on to part two. The instruction reads, read the task below and the information about what to include in your essay and then begin 
There were. This part of the performance as is from the writing strand, this is where you spend majority of your time composing your essay. In this task, if you have watched previous videos that I've placed on writing tasks, such as how to unpack the prompt, it will give you an insight into what I'm going to be doing next. What I'm going to do, this here where it says task, this is actually a writing prompt. And the writing prompt tells you how you're supposed to be writing your essay and what you should be including in your essay. By unpacking the prompt, you will want to learn the purpose of your essay. What do you want the reader to understand at the end of you writing that essay? And also the task, what you should include in the essay. You will also learn the audience who you're writing the essay to. You'll also learn what, what you should be doing in the essay, which is what verb, if you're going to be explaining or describing. And you'll also try to narrow down the topic so you can stay on track and be focused on what, on what you're supposed to be writing. So quickly, as I said to my students who I teach, um, I'm going to do another video on this where I do more writing and explain to students how they should be writing their essay. But on no examination paper, and my students will laugh when I um, tell them this, that you're going to see unpack the prompt. But because you have learned this skill, this is a pre-writing skill, this is a skill that you use before you actually start doing your writing, you will learn that you should just quickly jot down the abbreviation for unpacking the prom and then pull the information. So unpacking, like the analogy says, is basically like how you unpack your suitcase and pull out the things that you need. You're going to be unpacking the prompt to take out the things that you need. Also, right? So the graphic organizer that we normally use or the abbreviation that we normally use is the P, P A S T T. And P stands for purpose. And this is what we want the readers to understand at the end of them reading our essay. A stands for audience. And again, when I write my essays, or say, for instance, I'm doing a mathematics performance class and I'm working on my problem, I always go to the problem solving strategies for mathematics and for English language, I always do my pre writing strategies. Now, these are much sophisticated way of doing it rather than just reading the instructions or reading the scenario and then just jump into writing something. Now, what this actually does, when we plan out our writing or plan out our problem solving, we ensure that we include all the things that we should include in our writing and we get the results we desire. I'm telling you, we do get a full 100%. And this is what is all about. This is what the developing 21st century skills are all about. They're about adapting new skill sets and new strategies of how to go about our approach, writing, and problems in order so that we can be a bit more inclined or it, it would be up to the level of what it needs to be. So long ago, we just see um a essay description because we wouldn't even know that it was a prompt then and just write it 
Now, what the ministry asks us for doing the workshops that we have done to as teachers and for the booklets that we have received, it requires us to step outside of what we have always been doing and teach the students these skills and strategies. And I know as students, you don't easily grasp onto these things, one, because they're not always done in your typical classroom. Hence, we get private tutors or um, fortunately for students who are in my class, these are the things that we learn. And um, as teachers, sometimes it's a bit difficult for us to do something different than what we have always been doing. But I think like any profession, you have to evolve. And if this is what is required to produce 21st century students with the skills that when you go to Dubai or you go to China or you go to Canada, or England, you can compete and stand strong with all the students that has graduated from different countries around the world and still maintain the top jobs and carry out these skill sets that are required from you, then this is what we must do as teachers. And this is what we must adapt as students. So I'm going to continue. The S stands for strong verb. And I have a video um, on this particular topic. I'm going to link it here afterwards in the video. The T stands for topics. And the other T stands for task. So that's how we got the P-A-S-T-T. -T. All right, so let's go through the writing prompt now and let's identify all of these details. Again, the purpose is what we want the reader to understand at the end of them writing our, sorry, reading our essay. The audience is who we're going to be writing to. The strong verb tells us exactly what we're going to be doing the essay, doing in the essay. The topic is what the essay is about. And the task tells us what type of detail or what information we must include in our task, in our essay, sorry. The task is what we should include in the essay, basically. All right. So what is the purpose of the essay? And it says here clearly that the purpose of the essay is to help the Jamaica Tourist Board decide which local foods should be included in the Jamaica Food Festival to be held this year. We can either read the passage or read the prompt before and then highlight the information. What I'm going ahead to do is highlight the information before I'll read it in, in its entirety afterwards. So this is the purpose. I'm gonna use different colors to hide, identify. So I'm going to use green for purpose. Oh boy. I should change this color to green, just so I'm aligned. Let's see if I can get a green. I am getting a green, I might not get all the colors. The audience, who are we writing to? It says that the Jamaica Food Festival is to expose tourists, is to expose tourists, so we're writing to the tourists. because those are the person who will be attending the Jamaica Food Festival. The audience is the tourists already in blue. The strong verb now, what are we going to be doing? Are we going to be describing, which is a verb, or explaining? We have other verbs in this prompt. However, the strong verb tells us exactly what we're going to be doing in our essay. And what we're going to be doing is explaining. I'm going to put that in pink. 
gonna highlight in pink over here because I don't have any pink with my writing. The topic, usually when we look for the topic, we look for the word that is reoccurring most. Even though we see Jamaica Food Festival reoccurring, what we know to be the topic is food, Jamaican food. Use yellow. So Jamaican food is the topic. That's what the essay will be about. So you can highlight it everywhere where you're seeing it, or you can just do one highlight. I'm highlighting it everywhere where you're seeing it. The general topic is food, though. The essay will be about food. But more specifically, Jamaican food. And now I'm going to use red because I think this not is not quite the, the most important thing, but... It is very important, one of the most important things in unpacking the prompt or in the prompt because it tells you what you need to include in your essay. And that's the task, right? So the main things that we need to consider when we're looking at our prompt, although everything is important, is the purpose because we want to know what is the end goal, what we want the reader to understand. And then we also want to know what, what to include in our essay. This is very important. I cannot emphasize any more than using this red highlighting. Because most of the times, or a lot of times we write essays, but we forget to include what they ask us to include. And really the person who is marking the essay is only looking for what you should include. The other information are okay, but what you should focus, in, uh, focus on is what they ask you to include. And that's what the task is. So it says you are required to write an essay in which you identify three local food. You must identify three local food. If you write two, you're not. Or if you write two, you're not doing what they ask you to do in the essay. Right? And you must also explain, I'm not gonna go over the things, why you have selected each food to be included in the Jamaican Food Festival. It is very important that you include this information. Otherwise, you have not done what they asked you to do in the essay. All right? So I'm just gonna read the essay, the, the essay prompt or the writing prompt one time in full, and then I'm gonna go over what we unpacked. So the task is that the Jamaica Tourist Board is having an essay competition. The purpose of the essay is to help the Jamaica Tourist Board to decide which local food should be included in the Jamaica Food Festival to be held in July this year. The Jamaica Food Festival is used to expose tourists to foods eaten by most Jamaicans. You are required to write an essay in which you identify three local foods, explain why you have selected each of them to be included in the Jamaica Food Festival. Your essay must include details from source one and source two, as well as your own experiences. Now, all of the information that I have not highlighted is not what we're supposed to be focusing on. Even though it says that you must include information from source one and two, as well as your own experiences, that's a given, right? You have to include the information from the sources. Once you're doing a non-fictional summary writing where you're presented with sources, you must include the information from the source. So that's a given. That's not an actual part of the prompt that you should be paying close attention to. What you should pay close attention to is the purpose. And this is what the reader must understand after they're finished reading your essay is to help the Jamaica Tourist Board to decide which local food should be included in 
the Jamaica Food Festival to be held in July this year. The audience is the Tories. We're writing to the Tories, right? The strong verb The strong verb is explained. This is what we're going to be doing mostly in our essay. We're going to be doing more explaining. And then the task, sorry, the topic is Jamaican food. And the task is to identify three local food items. This must be in your essay and to explain why you have selected each of them to be included in the Jamaica Food Festival. I'm putting them in the, the front. All right. So now we can begin to write our essay because we know the information that must be included or what we should be at in chance, all right? When we write an essay, we must also remember that we should have an inclusion, sorry, an introduction and a conclusion. We must also stay on topic and that's why we highlighted the topic. So whatever we're writing about, we must know that it's Jamaican food or Jamaica food. We must use details from the two sources to support our opinions and we must give details from the sources in our own words. We should also follow the rules of spelling, the, the rules of writing, such as spelling, punctuation, and grammar usage. I'm gonna also do another video on what are the features of the introduction, the features of the body paragraph, and the features of the conclusion. I've done that with my students, but this is something that I must share publicly too as well. And this information that I'm bringing to you, students, are from the Ministry of Education. For HEP, the ministry has released a series of booklets that shows the teacher how to teach the students the skills that they want to be seen coming out in these examinations. So if you realize, most of the materials that I use are from the Ministry of Education. So I'm going to share what the ministry wants to see in the introduction paragraph, the body paragraph, and the conclusion paragraph, but I'll do that at a later date. However, I'll be doing that in my writing today, but because you don't have the experience of seeing these things, I might have to explain while I'm going ahead or after I've written my essay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start writing my essay. Some of the things that you want to include in your introduction is to have a hook, which is a strong start. Um, as I said, I'm gonna do another video on it. I won't go into much detail, all right?
Okay, sorry about that delay. So we want a hook, which is something that you use to reel in the reader. We also need to give a definition of our topic. And we want to also give the importance of our topic. And then we need to present the subtopics that, are become, that will be coming out in the body. So let me go ahead and write my introduction.
All right. So still on the introduction, but I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Do you like Jamaican food? Do you have a favorite food? Is there a particular dish that will always be a go-to dish while visiting Jamaica? Jamaican foods are rich in diversity. Similarly, to other aspects of Jamaican culture. Jamaican foods are either indigenous or brought to the island by different ethnic groups. Many people consider Jamaican foods to be the best tasting foods worldwide. That's a fact. Even compared to other Caribbean nations such as Trinidad, and Guyana. Water your taste buds. And get ready to learn about Aki, jackfruit, and jerk. In. So we're going to start the body paragraph now. One of the most important foods in Jamaica is Aki. Due to the fact that it is Jamaica's national fruit. Aki is paired with saltfish to create a malt watering. 